In March 1964, three scientists named Anthony Epstein, Yvonne Barr, and Bert Atchung discovered the first human virus that can cause cancer, and they properly dubbed it the Epstein-Barr virus. So here we have the Epstein-Barr virus, which has a structure similar to other herpes viruses. There's a viral envelope on the outside for protection, an inner matrix or tegument providing support and enzymes for the virus, as well as a nucleocapsid containing the virus's precious and stable double-stranded DNA. Now the most defining feature of viruses are their glycoprotein coats, shown here in red. EBV is no different and has a specific set of glycoproteins which allow it to bind to epithelial and B cells in the host. Two important glycoproteins are GP350 and GP42. Now remember these because we'll come back to them. EBV spreads through person-to-person -person contact, most commonly through body fluids like saliva. Epithelial cells of the oropharynx are the portals of EBV infection, and the virus can be isolated from either saliva, blood, and lymphatics. Swelling of the throat and lymph nodes is really common with EBV infection because of the hyperplasia of lymphatic B and T zones in the lymph nodes. The hallmark of EBV infection is that it causes a T cell independent B cell rapid growth of plasma and memory cells. Once the virus invades these B lymphocytes, it remains mostly dormant or hidden inside these cells, especially in a healthy person. Now let's recap some basic viral modes of replication, the lytic and lysogenic cycles. In both cycles, the virus releases its genome into the host cell, incorporates its genome into the host genome, and then forces the host cell to re replicate its DNA or RNA. Ultimately, there will be viral proteins and nucleic acid production, which all help to form new viruses. In the lytic cycle, the host cell bursts open or lyses in order to release newly formed viruses and viral proteins. This causes the death of the host cell, in this case, our B cell. But in the lysogenic cycle, the viral genome becomes incorporated into the host chromosome and it spreads quietly throughout the organism as the infected host cell reproduces through meiosis. Now here the virus is able to remain latent or hidden. Now EBV is a temperate virus. This basically means that it alternates its reproduction between both the lytic and lysogenic cycles. This is why EBV can stay dormant in the vast majority of people, occasionally flaring up due to environmental or physical changes to the host. Now let's walk through the process of how EBV infects us, humans. EBV glycoprotein GP350, if you remember from earlier, binds to the CD21 receptor. And GP42, the other important protein, attaches to the MHC class II molecule, and both of these receptors are on the B cell membrane surface. This then causes the EBV capsid to fuse with the B cell membrane in a process similar to endocytosis. This causes the virion to enter the cell. Once inside, the viral genome enters the host nucleus, basically taking over the cell. The virus uses the cell's enzymes, like DNA polymerase, to reproduce viral genetic material and proteins to form new viruses. Like all herpes viruses, EBV replicate inside the nucleus as opposed to the cytoplasm. This allows EBV to quickly control the host cell's response to infection, as well as to take full advantage of the host cell structure and enzymes relating to DNA transcription. The capsid and viral genome of EBV is assembled inside the nucleus. The virions and EBV protein antigens, or EBNAs, can then bud out from the nucleus and exit the cell. The released viruses will then go on to infect more B cells and more epithelial cells of the oropharynx, causing increased replication of the virus. EBV initiates B lymphocyte proliferation 
through plasma cell and memory B cell production. B cells originally infected by EBV will produce antibodies against EBV and its proteins. So something interesting with this virus is that many of the antibody producing plasma cells produce antibodies that do not react with EBV antigens. Some of the plasma cells will produce antibodies that react with red blood cells, for example, from other mammals like cattle, sheep, or horses. This humoral immune response, called the heterophile response, is the basis for different serological tests like the monospot test used to screen for infectious mononucleosis, or as most people know it as, mono natural killer or NK cells, and CD8 cytotoxic T cells will help control this explosive growth in the B cells infected with EBV. That's why lymphocytosis associated with EBV infection is caused by an increase in the number of circulating activated T and B lymphocytes. So there you have it. EBV is the most common virus affecting 95% of adults. It's no wonder it gets the name, Everybody's Virus.